Welcome everyone. In this video, just gonna spend a few minutes talking about how you can really observe the stack growing, shrinking using a debugger. I think that's oftentimes an easier way, especially if you are um, either haven't thought about the stack for a while or are new to learning about how the stack works. And then in particular, we're gonna look at a sample program here and look at the stack frames and how those, you know, how what happens to a stack frame as additional functions get called. So let's get started. Uh, the sample program today, again, just coming from one of my GitHub repositories. You can find this uh, learning reverse engineering. I'm not the most clever when it comes to naming things. Uh, this program here, really any of them will do, but uh, for this video, I'm gonna use the cdecl.c source file. Um, I've already got that compiled and opened up here in Ida. And you'll see that with Ida, we're already in main. And something to consider as we're getting into looking at the stack is that by the time we get into main, main itself is being called. So there's already a stack frame being built. And you can see evidence of that because not only do we have these arguments that have been pushed onto the stack before this call, uh, but then we have the prologue that creates the base of the frame. This push ECX is actually um, essentially like a sub ESP. Uh, and that it's creating four bytes of space for locals. It'll be this local here. Um, and then we're gonna get into this call to a function that I already renamed demo. And that's just gonna simply match up with our source program. Uh, now, I guess I did modify this just a little bit uh, in that we have in our main method here, not only the call to demo, which takes four arguments um, and then returns them sum together, but I've also just added this, this void function called do nothing, which prints a statement doing nothing um, and returns. And so that's also being called inside a demo. So we're just gonna trace through those. Um, if we go back to Ida then, the creation of the stack frame for this function then called demo really begins with these pushes. Now, keep in mind that the calling conventions can vary. That's why you saw in this uh, repository here, there was a couple of different um, conventions that are quite common, standard call, fast call, C declaration. 64-bit binaries also have a slightly different calling convention, more aligned with the fast call, in that it's going to favor the registers over the stack. So just have to be aware of the convention used. Uh, this program here, you can explicitly tell the compiler what convention to use, although this is the standard, the default. Uh, but here I, I said, go ahead and make sure to use C declaration just to show you what that syntax looks like. You'll see similar here with this function, the do nothing function, even though we didn't explicitly define that. Okay, for debugging then, I'm going to just use the built-in debugger with Ida. We're gonna set a breakpoint here on the first push. And uh, the only option here, because this is the free version, is the local Windows debugger. So we'll hit play and... We'll bump these fonts up a little bit and close some of these windows that I'm not really gonna care about. Here, let's actually make this a little larger. Let's go 18. Okay, so all we, I really want to focus on here in this video is we've got our, our stack view. You can see off to the lower right-hand side. And we also have our pointer, ESP, which is going to point to the top of the stack. So you can see that right now, 53FAC8 is the top of the stack here down in the stack view. So, okay, so over here on the left-hand side, then we have our pushes. That's going to push those arguments onto the stack. So. We can step, single step, and you'll see that as those get pushed onto the stack down here in the lower right, uh, that the stack pointer decrements by four, and then that value is moved into that region of the stack. So of course we're going to see, we see the four, now we're gonna see the three, then the two, then the one, and ESP will continue then to point at the top of the stack. Now we're getting ready for the call, and I'm gonna step into that call. You'll see that the return address will be pushed onto the stack, so that's gonna be the address CF1058, and we're going to enter into the function demo. So let's step into that. There's our return address, CF1058, and now we're in the function. Okay, so to continue building the frame for this, for this function, we have to go through the prolog now. So the old value of EBP has to be stored on the stack because these functions are using EBP as the base of the stack frame. You'll see, uh, for example, referencing arguments, referencing locals. Those are going to be relative to EBP. And so this is going to store the old EBP from the previous stack frame so that it can use EBP for itself. So the push puts that old value of EBP on the stack, as we see here. 
And now we update EBP to the top of the stack with this move EBP ESP. Now this function has more or less created its own frame. On the stack is the frame from the previous function though. And so it's still there. It just is not really referenced on the stack because of the current function we're in and essentially it's scope. It's going to reference its own stack frame and any values that it needed were either going to be globals or passed in as arguments. Um, now this call, the call to do nothing, as you see with the definition, has no arguments. So what happens with that is there was no pushes to indicate that we were building a new frame, but when we step in, we're going to push this return address onto the stack, CF1028, and we're going to enter into that function. Right? So now there's the return address for that function call, there's the return address for that function call, there is the old value of EBP, and now this is going to continue to create a frame for itself, so it's going to push EBP, that's going to rebase the stack frame by moving ESP into EBP, and now we're going to create yet another frame, This, but this time it's for printf. So you can see this process is just going to continue. Now there's going to be a push for this call. As a, there's going to be a push to get the argument onto the stack. So there's a pointer to that string. And now there's a call to printf. I'm not going to step into that because hopefully you get the idea here. Um, with this calling convention, though, the C declaration, the caller is responsible for cleanup. So after this call, we'll step over this call. You'll see that in order to clean up the stack frame that it used for the call to printf, it has to then offset this push. So that's why you're going to see an add ESP4. Push, pushed, decremented the stack pointer by four bytes in order to make space to push or to move a pointer to the string into the stack space. This is going to then add it. Adding will shrink the stack. Um, and it doesn't matter. You'll see here as we add to ESP4, and we just scroll up a little bit, right? The pointer is still there. It's just that our stack pointer is now pointing to this location that's highlighted in blue. Now we're getting ready to essentially unwind, right? that is we're into the epilogue. So we now need to pop EBP. That's gonna restore EBP from this push because there was no sub ESP. Functions that have local variables, you'll see pushes or, sh or uh, subs, it's oftentimes here as part of the prologue. Uh, there wasn't one here, so now the stack pointer is pointing to the old value of EBP. So it's just gonna pop that directly back into EBP and now it's gonna return and you'll see that the return address is now on top of the stack. So the epilogue makes sure that the function returns as it should. This is what's really important about these calling conventions, especially ones that are using the stack, because if this alignment was off, let's say you had a C declaration function, you pushed an argument, you called, but then there was never an add. Well, then when this pop was encountered, it wouldn't pop the right value, and the program would eventually go to the wrong location because it wouldn't return to the right address, or at least you could say bad things will happen. Okay, so now we're gonna return and you'll see that our stack pointer is pointing to the base that was set up here. Now it can, because it's using the base as being reestablished for this stack frame, right? Now all of these references from EBP will actually work. EBP plus, and you have arg 0, 4, 8, and C, uh, we can change these using the Q shortcut key to look at the raw offsets. You can also see up here, this is the, the raw offset. Um, so EBP plus eight, right? If we look at our stack pointer and we add eight bytes to it, that'll take us to this location, right? Because we're at 53FAB0, well plus eight would be 53FAB8. So that's one. That's gonna move that value into EAX. And we can see that as we step and execute that instruction, EAX now has a value of one. Okay, another four bytes, that gets the offset EBP plus C, so that's just simply this next location. And of course, one hex and 14 hex will be three and then four. All right, and again, had, had that function do nothing, not properly unwound, then we would have trouble accessing or referencing those arguments in this function. And so the, the calling conventions help to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, this can continue now. It's just gonna add 
in EAX because EAX is the accumulator register. Functions that return a value will oftentimes return them in EAX, and uh, this is how it's returning. So we can see once that's done, EAX contains the sum, which is 10. Let's see that over there. Now it's going to do the epilog pop EBP because there were no local variables. And now we're back to the return address. So now it knows where to return. So return is going to take this address off of the stack, going to tell the CPU where to go or EIP, and then the stack will increment. Okay, again, a uh, calling convention here. So we've got to adjust for the four pushes. So four, eight, C, 10 hex. So we have an add ESP 10. And now after that, you'll see that our stack pointer went from pointing here after the return to here. And that's where it was originally when this whole, this whole program started. And we can continue to watch the stack if we wanted to, uh, but now we're, we're catching the epilogue for the stack frame for main as it gets ready to return to where it was actually called. Okay, so that's how you can watch the stack. I think something like the stack is a very dynamic data structure. It's very important. It is oftentimes easier to watch using a debugger and observe it growing and the values moving in and, and seeing pointers when they're created. Uh, and it just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, we use some basic functions and the calling conventions to help with that. Uh, I've got more. If you go to the GitHub here, uh, you'll actually find at the root of this project, a readme, there's actually a number of videos that are gonna go through a lot of the different sample programs here to include a video on these calling conventions. So if you're not real familiar with these calling conventions, then those are a great resource here. You can already find on the channel uh, to help understand and get into all the details, looking at sample programs, watching the stack or the registers being used to, to really understand that. So hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you all in the next one.